Hi everyone, my name is Noor Al-Khadr and I'm here with my sisters Sheikha and Lulu Al-Khadr and we are having our first podcast episode and any, hopefully the last uh, for my class Architecture in the Middle East. So for today's assignment we're going to analyze two buildings. The first is the Ithnayan al Ghana building and the second is the National Museum of Kuwait. So I studied the first building for assignment one and I deemed it to be a Kuwaiti building. The building is very significant. It's considered the first Kuwaiti skyscraper in Kuwait. Um, it was built by Said Karim around the late 1950s. It had a lot of technological innovations and it really sets the scene for a lot of Kuwaiti architecture in Kuwait. Um, Nahit al-Liwan, um, and the brisoles and the heavy concrete, etc. But for today's building, um, one of the criteria was to choose a building that was created by a foreign architect. And the first building that popped into mind was the National Library and uh, National Museum of Kuwait that was designed by Michelle Echohard, Maharaf, I pronounce his name, Echohard, Echohard, in 1983. Um, because I think that it's a really unique and significant building. And I don't think that a lot of people know that it was created by a foreign architect. When a lot of buildings in Kuwait are designed by foreign architects, Nafs Abraj al Kuwait, they were designed for, um, by foreign architects. Abraj al Mai were designed by foreign architects. Majlis al Umar was designed by foreign architects, etc. So let me start the conversation by asking you guys, and Zain. What building is more Kuwaiti, Athnayan al Ghanim or the Mathaf al Watani, and why? So go. I would have said that the National Museum was more Kuwaiti. Because, really? Yeah, because I feel like the National Museum overall just looks more impressive to me. It doesn't look like something that just like blends into the background, something you wouldn't notice on the street. Um, and I feel like that is very quintessentially Kuwaiti, just being bold and noticeable. Um, and I feel like even though it's maybe my mem memory is serving, serving me wrong, but then I feel like it was more colorful, which again is a Kuwaiti attribute, I think. So I think that's more Kuwaiti. Okay, that's interesting. Lord, was you I was actually going to go with Naya al -Ghanim. Because it, it is quintess uh, quintessential Kuwaiti architecture uh, because it gives you that sense of the brutalism uh, combined with six days retro. It, uh, because of the economic boost in Kuwait during that time, because of oil being discovered there were a lot of buildings that were designed by foreign architecture but uh, architects but were heavily influenced by that era by that time period so right now whenever you'd go actually anywhere you'd see these old buildings which have that inadmissible that recognizable nostalgic uh, vibe to them and I think because of the sense of familiar familiarity familiar, oh my god uh, yeah. it's Kuwaiti architecture like you can find this everywhere and it's it's always there so okay I think that those are both interesting dissections um, and uh, Shekhuna, you're talking about dissecting it from a um, a social point of view. So this is yeah. Kuwaiti architecture because it wants to be bold and it wants to stand out. I feel out. like <laughs> if Kuwait, if a if a Kuwaiti building was if a, person if a Kuwaiti was person, yeah, if a Kuwaiti person was were represented by a person, I feel like maybe a more understated Kuwaiti person. I feel like the National Museum would represent them. Kind I of think that's like, very yeah. well articulated. The Kuwaiti National Building really represents the Kuwaiti spirit. 
with your the subject. boldness and the contrast yeah and but then it's also that, very tasteful it's not too bold um it's classy it's there's something really nice and warm about it um yeah, yeah. i think it was to very me, well designed yeah uh, the sure. building that presented our heritage the most and the past i mm. feel like that's what was so definitive about Kuwaiti architecture is that groundedness that these old buildings give. It's, it really gives you a glimpse into the past. And I think the contrast between this old, very disheveled, worn out building and these skyscrapers really give you an insight as to the beginnings of Kuwait and how it just keeps flourishing. And I think that unique and niche characteristic really emphasizes the Kuwaiti spirit to me. So. Anna, t- I, I, just, I just sent a photo to Sheikha about the interior of the Thnayan al building. And what I did in my first uh, analysis video was that um, because the building is like left to rot by the inheritors of the building, so nobody's really doing anything about it. Um, the people occupying the space inside decided to de- decorate it any way that they want. So when you go inside the building, you'll find like all like colorful walls and everybody's designing their doors in a specific way or whatever. So that also, yani maybe that's the reverse of what you guys were saying. And maybe that's the mm-hmm. Kuwaiti spirit, but from uh, the it's them reflecting on the interior. Uh, well, I think Kuwaiti architecture has always had such a heavy emphasis on the inside into people's lives. Mm-hmm. It doesn't necessarily have to be malls, but if you look at it from a domestic perspective, uh old mud houses weren't that spectacular but which when you go inside and you see how people decorate it you see the instruments being splayed out you see the children and playing in this giant courtyard and the utilization of the environment uh, in correspondence to uh, how they adapted their uh, environment to suit their lifestyle i think even now, when you see these modern buildings, they're really not that much of a looker, to be fair. I mean, they don't stand out. They don't look special. They're just like every other modern building in Kuwait. But when you go inside and you see the interior design, you see how lives flourish inside. I think that's very definitive of Kuwaiti architecture. It's not just the outside. It's the inside and how the inside complements the outside. So. Yeah, and me personally, I'm not, I haven't seen either. Like I've never been to the Kuwait National Museum, but then you have. I vaguely remember. I I haven't, but I maybe have seen the Thinian building, but then it's just something I've seen that it just seems maybe out of place in Kuwait now, like modern day Kuwait. There's something, like you said, left to rot seemed about right because it just seems like somebody left it there and forgot about it and then it's just stuck there while the rest of Kuwait um, continues to grow and builds more impressive skyscrapers. Um, Even though it was, I believe, one of the first um, to exist in Kuwait, there's just something very tired and intimidating about it that me personally, I just, it's not my favorite. Okay. It is very intimidating, but also when you look at any old buildings in Kuwait, they are really intimidating, and I guess most of the intimidation comes from the fact that it hasn't been looked after well. I think maybe if these old buildings had some form of care, they would be more appealing. But then I do appreciate how people decided to take this tired worn out building and then revive some life back into it with the colorful doors or however they decided to decorate it I think that was a nice way to 
bring new life into the place. Um, but I think overall, it's kind of, it's still dreary. Um, but maybe it's just one of those buildings that just serves a purpose. It wasn't supposed to be something grand or beautiful or something to look at. Um, Actually, it was supposed to be like a 10 story building. But later, while they were building and constructing the building, they had passed a bill that said that um, buildings shouldn't be more than four stories high. Uh, so that kind of puts a cut, put a dent in their plans. And so they settled for I don't know how many levels the, this building has, but it's almost like the, the story is very ironic when you see this old brutalist building next to these swapping skyscrapers. It's oh. kind of, it's very cliche. Anna, I want to it segue could've... into, sorry, Lulu. Uh, but yeah, I'm sorry. afraid of like going too long. I do want to start a new um, question to ask you guys. And okay, so we've discussed on whether the buildings are Kuwaiti or not. Alhin, we want to discuss on whether the buildings are Arab or not. And what do you guys think an Arab building is? So go ahead. I think an Arab building nowadays, at least, like when I think of an Arab building, my first thought is a really big, impressive skyscraper as opposed to something like a mud house or something made out of brick. Um, so, yeah, I feel like we've strayed away from our maybe initial, original, initial type of architecture. We've strayed really, really far. Um, and so as opposed to thinking of something really beautiful and thoughtfully made, well, I guess the skyscrapers are also thoughtfully made, but I feel like it's just more so a, a building than just um, like a beautiful home to be lived in. Okay. I completely agree. I think that uh, Arab architecture now there is no specific look to it, but it does have this grandiose aspect, and it it uh, there is a heavy emphasis on beauty rather than specifically practicality. But because um, most of the buildings or most of the notable buildings in Kuwait haven't actually been designed by Kuwaiti architectures or Arab architectures for that matter it's kind of hard to dictate what is arab architecture specifically in kuwait but i think arab architecture always had a very big emphasis on beauty and glamour aside from practicality but i feel like in that sense we're kind of um arab architecture is the opposite of the rest of the world because they are um, focusing more on practicality um, they want to like the cost of material is a thing really important thing to them but then I feel like um, in Kuwait or other Arab countries it's more so like how do we make this impressive how do we make this tall how do we make this something to ooh and ah at? Um, which I appreciate I appreciate that the art of design isn't getting lost um, and is just continuing to grow Okay, cool. So do you consider, based on your answers, and you're saying that Arab architecture is mostly these big, um, sublime skyscrapers made out of glass and steel. So does that mean that the buildings that I talked to you guys about today are not Arab? I mean, I guess not, okay. based off that. Lulua? I think... Um... The newer buildings, so the Kuwaiti National Building, the National Museum, would kind of fall into that category as it's big and it's impressive and it's also new. And it hasn't been worn down by, you know, it, just, it hasn't stood the test of time. Uh, but I'd have to say that, especially in Kuwait, uh, there is more emphasis and more important uh, for newer buildings and building something new there's this mentality that newer is always better 
And so I think if you look at new houses, um, new malls, they always kind of have that same look to them. They have a, sa- a similar vibe about them. And because of that, I'd say that is Arab architecture. It's almost like they're trying to stand out so much that they start to look similar, that they use similar techniques. They use similar uh, designs. Okay. Simply because they stand out. Okay. So last question that I have for you guys. Um, I think it would be interesting to do like a little experiment. Um, so you guys know, and I've told you guys, and that these buildings are in Kuwait. But had I not given you context, would you think that they were in Kuwait? And if not, where do you think they would be located? No, they seem very much Kuwaiti, even though they've strayed from modern day Kuwaiti architecture. I feel like they are very obviously Kuwaiti. There's, I don't know, I don't know what it is about them exactly. Maybe um, the use of geometric design or uh, with the, in the National Museum, maybe it was that. But then there is an air of Kuwait about them. Is that to say? So Kuwaiti, but not Arab. Yeah. That's a not. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe there's well, a... they're not Arab because they're old. I mean, Arab. They when you take these new buildings from Bahrain or from Saudi and Kuwait, when you put them together, they're nearly identical. But when you take these old buildings, or relatively old buildings from Kuwait, and you would compare them to the new buildings in the GCSE countries you would find the big difference. There would be a very stark difference as multiple factors are, uh, they all contribute to the design of the building and the practicality of the building and the usability of the building. I mean, if you Google that, that makes sense. sense. You won't see the anything like the Pinyan building or even the National a museum building. I guess if you scroll down far enough, you might find something old, but it, they don't align with Kuwait as it is today, I feel like. I mean, I think what makes them really Kuwaiti buildings is that they really show a specific time period in Kuwait. Yeah. Uh, the Sinayan building, the juxtaposition between this old... Uh, building and the skyscrapers next to it this is so distinctly Kuwait especially when you go into Salmiya or you go into Kuwait City that nostalgic factor immediately makes you recognize that this is Kuwait and then for the National Museum it's it's so 2010 Kuwait um it it almost reminds me of the Majlis in my building, was it called in English? Parliament. I don't know. Yeah, the national part. Is it national? The national I don't assembly. know. National Assembly. Building. Yeah. They look so similar, and we study, studied about them about nearly the same time. And so they're so distinctly Kuwait in the late 2000s for me. And uh, the the Nayan building, it it's so distinctly when you go out uh, in your car and you just pass these old worn down buildings with the peeling magazines and then next to it you'd see this beautiful new uh, grand mall. Does that make sense? Yeah, sounds good. Do you guys have any last remarks before we close this podcast off? Mm. Um, maybe that um, I wish Kuwait has put more effort into preserving the older buildings. I feel like maybe if time and effort was put into the Thinian building, it wouldn't look so out of place in modern day Kuwait. Maybe it it would have had its own charm to it, but then it um, now it just looks like something like a a piece of the past they couldn't really remove.
So I wish there was more effort into preserving um, older Kuwait and older Kuwaiti architecture. Okay, cool. Lulua? Um, I mean, it's, I'm basically going to paraphrase, paraphrase what Sheikha said, but it's just exactly that. There was so much emphasis on building newer uh, buildings and having the city expand that there was never really any attention put into individuality and architectural principles. Um, there is no, there is nothing that really sparks that Kuwait in any building that you see now. I think maybe if you look at a building, you just think, oh, that's old and that building's new. Uh, there is nothing really special about them. And I, I hope that that's something we can maybe work on um, as civilization grows, as we grow as a community and our cultural, uh, our cultural heritage can shine through. So it's not really just modernism. It's not just really uh, taking something from uh, modern day Europe or modern day America and just plastering it on here without any um, thought to how it would fit in here. Exactly. And just for the sake of it being new and because it's new, it's better. I wish we just put more thought into us, into the really Kuwait. What is Kuwait when you distill it and you make it, you, you take that concoction and you turn it into a building I don't think there's anything like that here I think maybe the buildings that are special are basically just because of special architects that were uh, brought from these faraway countries with these amazing backgrounds but really there's there's nothing authentic yeah authentically Kuwait nothing made in Kuwait you know okay uh, thank you guys for being here today and for taking time from your day for talking to me about architecture and I really appreciate your thoughtfulness and your responses they were very articulate and very interesting to me because uh, we do have like a lot of similarities in terms of thinking and I think once the, my any instructors say this they'll say oh yeah they are no sisters uh, but in other cases yeah, My God, whenever Sheikha spoke, I would just be like, oh, khalas, I don't need to say anything. <laughs> she, she just said everything <laughs> and better. Yeah, over And then when you spoke up, oh my God. Differences, but it's fine. Yani, that's how the world works. But Sani, thank you guys again. And I will see you later, inshallah. Bye.